Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum Pakistan. This is Anti from Pakistan Strategic Forum. Today we will debunk Iran's fifth generation fighter jet known as Keher 313. Before going to the topic, I would request all our followers to please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon. First of all, we will see the basic features of a fifth generation fighter jet. Basic features are stealth means that they have very low RCS and it's very hard to detect them on a radar. They are highly maneuverable. They have advanced avionics and most of all, they have multi-role capabilities which means they can perform both air-to-air, -air, air to ground and air to sea roles. Now we will discuss Iran's fifth generation fighter jet Keher 313. Keher is manufactured by Iran Aircraft Manufacturing Industrial Company also known as HESA or SAHA. It was first revealed to the public in February 2013 and Iranian military claimed that the project is under development. Iran claimed that Keher is a fifth generation fighter and it can carry two 2000 pound bombs or six air-to-air -air missiles. It will have low RCS and low altitude flight capability. Iran further claimed that the project is extremely indigenous and Keher will have same features as US-made F-22 Raptor. It's time to debunk Iranian claims. First of all, Iran claimed that Keher can carry two 2,000 pound bombs or six air-to-air -air missiles. But if we look closely to the airframe of Keher 313, we can simply see that there is not enough space to carry such a payload. Moreover, Keher 313 doesn't has the internal weapon carrying bay which is the basic feature of a fifth generation fighter jet now let's discuss keher 313's engine here we have shown you four examples of different aircrafts and their engine exhaust we have f-16 we have f-35 we have j-20 and we have F-22 Raptor. In all four cases, you will see that all four aircrafts have engine exhaust. The F-16 Fighting Falcon and the F-35 Lightning II have single exhaust because they are single engine aircrafts. And in case of J-20 and F-22 Raptor, both have dual exhaust because both are dual engine aircraft. Now, let's see Keher 313. As you can see in the picture, you will be amazed to see that Keher 313 has no exhaust behind its back. We all know that exhaust in a fighter jet plays a very important part. So if you don't have exhaust in your engine or in your aircraft, it means that the heat of the engine will remain inside the body of the aircraft and it will burn out. So, we can assume or we can say that Keher 313 when it was shown to the public taxiing on the runway, it was just a bluff. It was not the actual aircraft, it doesn't have the actual engine. Because if it has actual engine, you would see exhaust behind its back. Now, let's discuss the size of the nose of Keher 313. Here you can see that we have highlighted the nose of the aircraft and if you compare it with the other aircrafts, you will see the size of the nose is very small. As we all know that all modern fighter jets have AESA radar in their nose and in the case of Keher 313, its nose simply doesn't has enough space to house AESA radar and the AESA radar is even the basic feature in a fourth generation or fourth plus generation fighter jet. So, if Iran's Keher 313 can't house an AES radar in its nose, how it can be a fifth generation fighter jet? Now, let's come to the most important part of the aircraft, which is the cockpit of the aircraft. We have highlighted the cockpit of Keher 313 
to make our audience understand the components used in Kehar 313. First of all, you can see we have marked a component with the number 1 in the cockpit. You can see the name of the component marked is TrueTrack Sorcerer Autopilot System. Then you can see the marked number 2. The name of the equipment is Garmin SL30 Navcom. Then you can see the third which is Dynon Avionics EFIS D100. And at the fourth it's Dynon Avionics EFS D10A. Then we have on the five Garmin GTX 327. At number six we have Garmin GMA. At number six we have Garmin GMA. 340 audio panel at number seven we have dynon avionics hs34 you know why we highlighted these parts because both garmin and dynon manufacture civilian grade equipment which is used in the trainer aircrafts or the civilian aircrafts basically small jets both companies garmin and dynon don't manufacture military grade equipment the equipment which is used in fighter jets. It's a very important point because Iran is claiming that Kehar 313 is a fifth generation fighter jet. How you can install non-military grade equipment in a fighter which you are claiming that it's a fifth generation fighter aircraft. All the equipment installed in the cockpit of Kehar 313 is non-military grade equipment and you can check both companies profile on the internet that both these companies only manufacture civilian grade equipment which is not used in the fighter jets. At number 8 you can see we have highlighted poor finishing which indicates it's a plastic body. You can clearly see that the finishing is not up to the mark and it doesn't reflect or doesn't even look like a fighter aircraft from inside. At number 9 we have highlighted the throttle or the joystick of the aircraft. The poor finishing in the aircraft. Look at the whole cockpit. The whole cockpit doesn't even look like a fourth generation fighter jet cockpit. At best it looks like a scaled down version of a trainer aircraft. So we can't say by looking into the cockpit of Kehar 313 that it's a cockpit of fifth generation aircraft because the cockpits of fifth generation aircrafts are very very different from Kehar 313's cockpit. Here are some examples. First we will show you a cockpit of F-16 Fighting Falcon which is a fourth generation aircraft. Now you can see Thunder's cockpit. Everything is properly finished. Everything is properly placed. Now let's come to the fifth generation fighter aircrafts. This is the cockpit of F-35 Lightning II. You can compare its cockpit with the Kehar 313 cockpit. Then we have the cockpit of F-22 Raptor. Again you can compare it with the cockpit of Kehar 313. You will be amazed to see there is no similarity similarity from the cockpit of these aircraft which I have shown you with the cockpit of Kehar 313. So if you don't have the cockpit which is well equipped according to the fifth generation standards, how can you say that your fighter it's a fifth generation aircraft? It's a big question mark or Iranian aviation industry. Let's come to the video which mostly Iranian sources claim that it's the video of Kehar 313 flight test. First of all, we see an aircraft running on the runway but takeoff of the aircraft is not available in the video or not shown in the video and then the video quality is really poor. You really can't analyze that is it a drone or an actual aircraft flown by a human. So the video quality is really poor and we haven't seen a takeoff of the aircraft because the takeoff of the aircraft would have shown us that it is it piloted by a human or not. We really can't see the engines. We really can't see the cockpit of the aircraft because the video quality is really poor. So we are not sure whether it's an actual aircraft or a drone. You can make a drone. Obviously it, it's a remote control drone. It can be flown from a ground station control. In my experience it's not the actual aircraft and when you analyze the maneuvers it it's doing at such a low altitude. I have never seen any aircraft doing such maneuvers at uh, such a low altitude. Yeah, drones can do those maneuvers because I have flown some drones and I have experience on drones. Yeah, drones do perform such stunts or such maneuvers at low levels, but not the actual aircraft. No takeoff has been shown in the video. No landing has been shown in the video. So after realizing the whole video, I can safely say because I have experience in flying drones that this could be a drone because this is definitely not actual fighter aircraft. I must say that the video quality is kept low intentionally just to hide whether it's an actual aircraft or drone. 
after observing engine especially the exhaust of the engine the cockpit of the aircraft and the nose of the aircraft plus the claimed payload capacity which Iranian military claimed that it can be armed with the six air to air missiles or two 2000 pound bombs we can safely say that uh, it's not the actual aircraft plus it's very important to realize here that uh, fifth generation fighter aircrafts are very difficult to make or to manufacture you need a huge industry to manufacture fifth generation fighter aircraft even just fighter aircraft if you have to manufacture a fourth generation aircraft it's a very difficult task if, if you don't have a particular aviation industry or a grown aviation industry you take example of Pakistan you can take example of India you can take example of any country especially I am just mentioning Pakistan and India because and even Turkey that Pakistan, India and Turkey, we have a, a growing aviation industry, not a mature aviation industry. And we find it very difficult to manufacture aircraft, especially fighter aircraft at our own. Pakistan collaborated with China to make JF-17 Thunder. Everybody knows it's a joint venture between Pakistan and China. Same is the case with Hal Tejas, though it's a failed project, but uh, India took a lot of equipment to manufacture that particular plane, though it's a disaster for an Indian aviation industry and Indian Air Force. In the case of Turkey, in their fifth generation fighter program, which is TFX they are taking a lot of foreign support so it's very difficult to manufacture a fifth generation aircraft all of a sudden when you don't have any experience and Iranian industries or Iranian aviation industry doesn't have any aircraft so how can you uh, build an aircraft all of a sudden and claim it that we have manufactured a fifth generation aircraft when you haven't manufactured any aircraft and you don't have any R&D industry in your country and as we all know that Iran is under sanctions so no country can support them officially to make a fifth generation aircraft so they obviously can't take foreign help as we safely say that Iran's Kahed 313 was just a propaganda machine propaganda tool of Iranian regime to uh, satisfy their ego to deter US to deter Israel and one thing I must mention over here that when you do propaganda you must do it properly just don't make joke of yourself because Kahed 313 after analyzing it it's just a joke so it's clearly not a fifth generation platform. It's clearly even not a fighter jet. It was a propaganda tool by Iranian regime, which I would say badly failed because you can't deter superpowers or military powers with such propaganda. In the end, I would request all our followers to please visit the YouTube page of International Defense Analysis. Link is provided in the description box of this video. Moreover, we request all our followers to please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and please press the bell icon. That would be all. Stay blessed. Take care. This is Anti signing off. Pakistan, Zindabad.